Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to Sky Observer's Hangout. And my audio is repeating. Hang on. There we go. I hope everybody can hear me all right. And uh, hi, everyone. My name is Michelle. Sorry about that technical issue just then. Um, there we go. Hi. So my name is Michelle Nichols. I work at the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. I hope you guys can hear me OK. Um, I am here in my house. The Adler Planetarium has been closed since March. Uh, but we are bringing you this program live tonight um, and it is going to it is unscripted it is going to be driven completely by you and I'll explain what that means in just a little bit um, so we have put in the chat in YouTube that we'd like to know where you're where you're coming to us from so if you could put in the chat what town what city big city uh, what state uh, you're in that would be great we would love to know that information and um, we are not just a team of one. I've got two more people uh, behind the scenes. So feeding me your questions, your comments, your information is Colleen. So everybody say hi to Colleen in the chat. And then helping her out also is Sarah. And so these are two of my colleagues at the Adler Planetarium. Um, and so ah, and we have someone joining us. Hello, Jose. I hope you can hear me. I think his audio is coming in in just a sec, so give him up. He's muted. There we go. Jose is a, a special guest. I'm talking about him, even though he, he doesn't realize I'm talking about him. Um, so Jose is uh, one of our telescope volunteers at the Adler Planetarium, and he is going to attempt attempt to do something special for us tonight. Um, so I can't. We can't 100% uh, guarantee that this is going to work, but um, if it does, then Jose's got his uh, telescope set up and he is going to attempt to get a live view of the comet. So we are going to uh, see if that will work a little bit later. So if you want to join us, that would be great. Um, so I'm going to switch over. Oh, we've got some folks in Chicago. We've got some folks uh, north of Dallas. I need to say a special hello, by the way, um, to some family who I know are watching down in uh, north of Dallas. So please uh, say a special hello to Dwayne and Rena and Max and Henry. Hi, guys. I know you're watching. Um, and uh, a, a big hello to everyone who's joining us. Now, I mentioned before that this is completely unscripted. This is a live program, um, and it is going to be driven by you. If you were with us last night, we had initially planned on showing you some pictures that people had taken of the comet, and I'm going to show you some pictures in just a sec. Um, and we are going to be um, uh, we were going to be uh, talking about the comet, and I figured people were going to ask about the comet. We had so many requests for information about what direction to look, where exactly to look in the sky for the comet, uh, based on where people were. And so we decided that tonight we would throw the outline out the window, and this would be driven by you. So um, what we're going to do is uh, periodically I'm going to grab a city from the list of where you are, and I'm going to put it into a desktop planetarium program, and we are going to show you where in the sky to look for the comet tonight and over the next few days. So um, I don't know how many we're going to be able to get through. Uh, we will do our best to get through as many as we can. Um, and we're going to give you information that if it's not clear where you are tonight, especially in the Chicago area, I was looking out the window a little bit. There's some there's some clouds here and there. It's going to be hit or miss in this area tonight. Um, but uh, we'll give it a try. But uh, it may be clear where you are over the next few days. So uh, hopefully you'll be able to see the comet and hopefully we'll give you some useful information. I want to go over some tips and tricks for this comet. Um, it is called Comet Neowise and uh, people were asking last night where in the world does that name come from? We'll talk about that. Um, so I'm going to look over. I've got several screens going here. My other screen over here is where I'm keeping an eye on your chat and oh we've got some folks over in the eastern time zone. That is great. 
Um, so we've got New York, we've got Maryland. Hi guys. We've got Florida. So it looks like we may have to do some Eastern time zone locations first uh, because it's probably already dark where you are or really close to it. Um, so we want to get to you guys first. It's not quite dark here in Chicago. We are on the Eastern edge of the central time zone. So the sun just went down a few minutes ago. So it's going to be a little while before we get dark. And those of you out west of Chicago and over in the other side of the central time zone, the sun is, isn't even down for you yet. So it's going to be a little while um, before you are able to see the comet. So for those of you in that eastern time zone, we're going to give you some cool information, I hope. So let me check over at the chat. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention, I'm doing this from my house. The Adler Planetarium is closed, um, and but we are focusing on our digital programs. We want to connect with you. We can't be with you in person. We wanna connect with you digitally. So we're doing programs like this and others, and we're rolling out more over the next few weeks and months. By the way, you might see one of our cats go through the video. I'm, we're trying to keep that from happening, but the two of them might show up. I'm just warning you ahead of time. You might see some cats. Um, so I'm also um, uh, apologizing up front if there are any technical flubs or anything like that because I'm doing all the production myself. So uh, uh, I'm sure those of you who have run Zoom meetings uh, over the last few months, you can understand, right? But Let's get to the content, right? You came here to learn where the comet is going to be. So I'm gonna check in the notes real quick and I'm gonna check to see, we've got uh, Witten, Germany, holy cow, wow. Palm Coast, Florida, Saratoga Springs. Why don't we start with Sar Saratoga Springs? Um, and by the way, you're gonna hear me talking to Colleen and Sarah. They can't talk to you, they can type uh, and they can hear me. So I occasionally am gonna give them directions. Um, and Sarah is going to be my person on the ground to um, uh, help me kind of narrow down where to go in uh, Starry Night, which is what I'm gonna use to uh, dial up the planetarium program. So occasionally I'm going to ask Sarah to do something like, hey, Sarah, could you give me the larger, the largest city near Saratoga Springs and put that in my notes? Uh, because just in case Saratoga Springs is not in my database. So um, the database is good, but it's not it doesn't have every city in it. So uh, we're going to have to go for like the, the bigger towns that might be closer to Saratoga Springs. OK. Let's see how this is gonna work, all right? You guys ready for this? Let's give this a try. All right, so I'm going to share my screen. There we go. All right. And I'm gonna check to see that you guys are actually seeing. Yes, you are. There we go, you can see my video too and you can see the screen. It helps if you're watching this on your phone to turn it landscape, so uh, turn it sideways. If you're watching this on a laptop, it's even better um, because this means the stars will show up a little bit better. I'm gonna start with Chicago and then Saratoga Springs, I'm gonna hit you first, all right? So this is Comet Neowise. This comet is named for the spacecraft that discovered it. So March 27th of this year, um, Comet Neowise was discovered by the Neowise spacecraft. It's an infrared telescope. Um, the NEO on the front part stands for Near Earth Object. And what that means is the telescope is searching for objects that come relatively close to Earth's orbit. Got to map out all that stuff that's out there, right? To date, the, the spacecraft has found 15 comets and literally tens of thousands of asteroids. And so this is one of the 15 comets that it has discovered. Now, the program that I'm using is, calling Star is called Starry Night Pro. We are not... Uh, clients of theirs or anything like that. I just happen to prefer this particular program when I'm showing the night sky on my computer. There are many others such as Stellarium and Sky Safari, and you may have your very favorite uh, that you use on your phone, but this is the one that I like on my computer. And you can see my cursor as well. And I have this dialed up for Chicago at nine o'clock tonight. And you can see I've got it set for July 17th. So, um, what you're gonna look for is not necessarily a tail that long, um, but you're gonna look for right here, I'm gonna move the sky just a bit. Um, 
look for the Big Dipper right here, and then pretty much draw a line right below the Big Dipper. Imagine the water in the Dipper is pouring out, and it will basically pour out onto the comet. No, not literally, but you get the idea. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures in a little while. One of our telescope volunteers, uh, Mark, had gotten a picture last night. And to show you how cool this is, I will show you where the comet was last night. He has a picture of the comet and these two stars right here. He was able to get a picture of those two. Um, but I want to dial this up for tonight. And so um, that way we've got uh, uh, an accurate representation that the uh, where the comet is now. How high is it? Because you kind of can't get a sense of this. I can mouse over and I can look uh, look down about halfway down in the word list and you'll see the word altitude. Altitude means how high the comet is above the horizon. It says 20 degrees. So at nine o'clock tonight, the comet will be 20 degrees above the horizon. Now it's not gonna be visible really at nine o'clock. So let's dial this up for something a little more reasonable. How about 915? There we go. I've, I've changed it to 915 and now the altitude is 18 degrees. So please remember this all throughout this talk. How high does that mean? How high is 18 degrees versus 30 degrees or whatever? You've got fists. If you were with us last night, you're gonna remember this. Got your fists, take your fist, put your fist out at arm's length, okay? And eyeball your fist against the against the background sky. Okay, the bottom of your fist to the top of your fist is 10 degrees. So if you want to get an idea of what 18 degrees looks like and how high up the comet is or how low it is, put your fist out at arm's length, put the bottom of your fist on the horizon, stack another fist on top. So keep that one straight and stack another one on top. It'll be slightly low below the top of your second fist. That's 18 degrees. All right. So that is for Chicago tonight. And if I go forward in time over the next few days, so let me go forward, I'm stepping by a day, you're gonna see how the comet is going to be in relation to the Big Dipper. Now, this information will pretty much be the same for everybody. The difference, the two differences will be what time is sunset in your area and um, where are you, what latitude are you? Are you higher than Chicago's latitude? Are you lower than Chicago's latitude? So let's give this a try. Saratoga Springs, your big city is Syracuse, right? So I'm going to dial up Starry Night. I need to move it slightly, there we go. I'm gonna dial up Starry Night and I'm gonna go to Syracuse and there it is, Syracuse, New York. All right, and I'm gonna let it run. And it's going to Move the sky, the sky is not gonna move all that much. It just gets very dramatic when it moves, right? It goes way high above the earth and, and back down and there we go. So 10.15 tonight, actually I'm gonna dial this up for you for right now. Um, so Syracuse at uh, 9.40, let's do 9.45. Whoops, there we go, 9.45 for you. Um, so it is, Let's see, the height is, the altitude is 28 degrees. Is that right? No, that's not right. Because I want to, I need to go to 1045 because this program is, whoop, no, I know why. I still have it set for July 24th. So let's go back to July 17th. That's why it wasn't right. There we go. All right, so 945 PM, Syracuse, here you are. Your altitude is 17 degrees. So pretty much what it is in Chicago. So that's your that's where you should look right now. Um, and your sunset time was probably about an hour ago, give or take. Um, so there you go, Syracuse. And then over the next few days, again, you can you're gonna see the, the comet drift up and to the west. So there you go. Who do we have next? We have Palm Coast, Florida. All right, let's see if Palm Coast is in the system. Let's let's give that a try. All right, so I'm gonna view from Palm Coast. Nope, not in there. So I'm gonna go latitude and longitude. I'm gonna go, let's see, latitude is 29 degrees north and your longitude is 81 degrees west. I hope this works. Let's see, let's see, negative, there we go. 
I think it's, let's see if this works. All right, now we're going. I need to make sure that I actually got this in the right latitude and longitude. There we go, we've gone south. And, yep, pretty close to Daytona Beach. Oh, that'd be a great place to go. Here we go. So tonight, 945 for you. Comet's kind of low because you are farther south. And so it is going to be about eight degrees above the horizon. So that might be pretty tough to see. So we're looking toward the northwest. Um, so that might be a little tough, but it'll get a little better over the next few days. So let me show you Palm Coast and Daytona Beach, um, you're gonna go up higher. So by the 23rd, it'll be fairly high up and it'll be 22 degrees up, so that's better. Um, so as long as you don't have lots of buildings or trees off to the Northwest, um, you may have a chance of actually seeing this thing. Now, what in the world should you look for, all right? Let's do one more and then I'll show you some pictures so you can get a sense of what to look for, all right? Because you're probably going, okay, I get the, starting to get the idea of the direction, maybe the height, but what is this thing even going to look like? What do I need to see it? I need to grab one thing that's behind my screen. Give me a sec, because I'm going to show you a tool that will help quite a bit in being able to spot the comet. That is a pair of binoculars. It does not need to be a fancy pair. Um, this comet is kind of hard to see with just the naked eye. Uh, people have been reporting seeing it with the naked eye, but it's kind of tough. So if you have even just a simple pair of binoculars, this will help. You do not need a telescope in order to see it. Um, if you have one, great, but you don't need one. A pair of binoculars will help. So rules of thumb, stars twinkle, planets don't, comets are fuzzy satellites move okay uh, those are good rules of thumb to uh to remember when you're when you're taking a look for a comet all right who do we have next let's see we've gone to a couple places so far i'm going to scroll down oh we've got maryland eastern vermont and albany excellent okay so let's go to i said maryland first so let's pick a town in maryland Let's see, how about Baltimore? Because if we're talking Baltimore, Annapolis, one of those other towns, it's not that big of a deal. So if, if it's not exactly where you're located, totally fine. Um, so we're gonna wait for Starry Night to do its thing. And I'm gonna, once it stops, I'm gonna dial it back to July 17th. There we go. Yeah, I'm gonna put this more in the center so you can see it. So Maryland, you need to look about 14 degrees above the horizon, all right? So remember, fist out at arm's length, bottom of your fist on the horizon, top of your fist is 10 degrees. This is 20, so about halfway up your second fist, that's 15 degrees, so that's a little low, um, but it's doable, okay? So you may, wanna, you may wanna see if you can go out and spot that. All right, so we've got Maryland and how about, uh, how about Vermont? So let's pick a town in Vermont. How about Burlington, right? Maybe Burlington, Vermont. Again, it's not that, not terribly, uh, not terribly different from one to the next. So let's see where we have in, let's see, we've got Montpellier, we've got Springfield. How about Springfield? Let's go to Springfield, Vermont. I've always wanted to go to Vermont. So now we get to go through the magic of Starry Night. Um, while we're waiting, uh, I know a question just popped up. Uh, is there any location near Chicago that we recommend for going to view? If this were a non-pandemic world, we'd be able to recommend some places to go. Unfortunately, because of the pandemic, because of the need for social distancing and keeping people safe, and for the very practical, well, two very practical reasons that we don't want everybody showing up in the same spot. And the other one is a lot of parks have changed their hours. So while I could tell you to go to a certain park in the far Western suburbs, 
I know that that particular park has changed their hours. Um, I just don't know what they've changed them to. So, or they may have changed their hours to sunset, which does us no good. Um, so unfortunately we cannot recommend a specific place to go for safety reasons and just for practical reasons that a lot of places um, have, have changed their normal hours. So forgive us for that. We, we would love to be able to recommend a park or a place to go to, but you're just gonna have to maybe do a little bit of legwork in order to uh, find that out. All right, so we've got Springfield, Vermont, and here we go. You're a little farther north than Chicago. So this is, um, whoops, sorry, that is 1045. Let's go to 945. There we go. For you right now, the comet is 15 degrees above the horizon. So Vermont, beautiful skies there. I bet you you're a lot darker than uh, the Chicagoland area. So enjoy the views of the comet. You just might have to get away for some from some trees. And then over the next few days, you'll see that comet rise a little bit higher, all right? Okay, we'll do one more. Um, let's see, we've got, how about, how about Detroit, Michigan? How about that? All right, hope you guys are enjoying this. This is kind of fun for me too. Um, all right, there you go. Letting Starry Night do its thing. Um, so, I mentioned that the comet has been visible and that people have been getting pictures of it. I'll show the pictures right after I show Detroit uh, what they need to know here. Um, people have been getting pictures. It has not been a great comet, meaning capital G, capital C. It has not been like a showstopper comet. Um, it's been a very good comet. We are very happy that we have this comet. Um, so it is, it is something that we can point you to um it is something that uh, we hope gives you a little distraction during this time uh, but uh, we hope you also can go out and try to find it because it's relatively accessible as far as comets go okay detroit 20 degrees up you're a little higher altitude than chicago just a little bit so 10 degrees 20 degrees and so that's basically the comet for you right now okay so detroit maryland vermont Florida, where else did we go? Uh, Saratoga Springs. If you guys actually see this thing tonight, I expect to see a report in the chat. I want you to tell me if you see it. If it's clear where you are, tell us if you spot it. You're gonna see a, a, a kind of a, not a dim fuzzy thing, but if you have a pair of binoculars, it'll be, it'll be a little bit brighter fuzzy thing with maybe a little bit of a tail. So let us know. I expect to see an observation report. Um, all right. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for just a sec. Don't worry, we'll get back to a few more cities in just a bit. I see you, Washington Island in Door County. I see you. You're one of my favorite places to go on planet Earth. I see you. Um, and uh, we've got some Illinois ones, all right? So uh, we'll get to you guys in just a sec. All right, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. There we go. And all right, I'm gonna show some pictures because pictures are a lot of fun of this comet. So, all right, I'm going to go to that. There we go. Okay, so we have our chart as to where to go. If you want to take a quick screenshot of this chart, it's a handy thing to have. Um, just gives you a general sense of what to look for. So remember, if you can see the Big Dipper, you can have a chance at finding the comet. OK, it's not going to be hugely bright. It just isn't. It's 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 not going to it's not going to overpower the night sky. But um, if you have that pair of binoculars, that'll make it a little easier. And uh, we've got a couple other things you can look for on the map here. If you uh, take the Big Dipper here and you draw a line between these two stars, they're going to run into Polaris, the North Star. Now, despite how it appears on this drawing, it is not the brightest star in the sky. The, the Polaris is only about the 40th brightest star in the sky, but the Earth's North Pole points directly at it. So as everything rises in the east and sets in the west, it turns around Polaris, okay? If you um, poke a hole in the dipper and you imagine all the water running out onto the back of Leo the lion, we've got, here's the head and neck of Leo, here's his heart, here's his back, and here's his tail right here. 
Okay, so you might see uh, a few stars from Leo the lion as well. All right, so how about those pictures? Here we go. Um, this is a picture I took from Naperville, Illinois. Uh, if you see the comment, you can see it. It's that fuzzy smudge right there. I took this a few nights ago when it was pretty clear, but it was still pretty low. Um, so I've circled it just so you can see it a little more easily. And I've zoomed in and not too bad. It's only my third comet that I've ever taken a picture of and my first two uh, were back in the 90s when I took actual film. So gives you a sense of how old I am. Um, this is a picture taken last night from one of our fantastic Adler Planetarium telescope volunteers. And I just wanna mention, I know we've got some of our telescope volunteers, some space visualization volunteers, some history volunteers. I know you guys are out there. I just wanted to say hi and thank you and we miss you all. Um, so this is from Mark Benson. He's one of our telescope volunteers. He took this from Oak Park, uh, right around Oak Park, Illinois. So not bad. He said the clouds were a little fuzzy and it was a little hard to find. Um, but there's the comet right there. And he very kindly drew a circle with of uh, those two stars. Um, those two stars that I pointed out before, those are uh, one of the feet of the big bear. So those are the two feet stars, the front feet stars of the Big Bear. So he said he used those two. So you draw the uh, draw the Big Dipper and go kind of go down that front leg and hit those two feet stars and go down into the right. And that's how he was able to what we call in astronomy star hop. Um, he was able to star hop to the comet. He said he couldn't see it with the naked eye. Uh, but once he was able to star hop his way there, he was able to see it with binoculars. So Mark, if you're out there, thank you for uh, for sending these pictures in. So there we've got the picture zoomed in just a little bit more. All right, so we've got uh, just showing you what it looked like last night. Um, and so in relation to those feet stars. So there we go, see that? Not too bad. These, uh, these planetarium programs do pretty well. We've got another image that was taken last night by another fantastic Adler Telescope volunteer, Bill Chu, and he is an amazing astrophotographer. So this is a picture that he took uh, in Indiana, Northwest Indiana. And this is um, amongst some clouds. And so, yeah, he said those clouds were a little pesky last night. He's gonna try again tonight, um, but the pesky clouds may stick around. He took these two, these next two a couple days ago. And so he got the comet uh, in the evening and in the morning. So this was a morning picture and this was the evening picture. So he took this one first and then he took this one the next morning. So he said to me today, he's really glad this thing is a better early evening object instead of early morning because getting up at three in the morning to actually see this thing is a little rough. So anyway, um, here we go from Lowell, Indiana, which is where, uh, he was taking the picture of. This one was uh, taken recently from uh, Joe Guzman, another Adler Planetarium Telescope volunteer. We have some very talented people. Um, also known as the Chicago Astronomer, you guys may know Joe. If you don't, you should. Um, here is his picture, a beautiful picture of the comet. And you may be able to tell that there, it's kind of a, uh, the, the tail almost looks forked. All right, so let's look at another picture. Check this out. He said he could see a greenish tint to the comet. And so here's that almost looks like a forked tail right there. So there you go. Really, really beautiful picture. Here's another one. He took this uh, four nights ago. And he took this one about a week ago. So really amazing stuff. All right, so let me stop sharing those pictures. I need to get back to showing where uh, the comet is gonna be in your area because that's what you came here for, right? Okay, so we've got, I'm gonna go back up in my notes. How did we do, we've got, oh, let's do Germany because my goodness, you are tuning in from a, from a fair distance away. So let's do Germany. Let me go back to sharing my screens. So let me go back to Starry Night, here we go. All right, and we're going to view from Witten, Germany. I hope I'm saying that right. I'm not sure 
if I've got the right town, but Germany is, it's big, but it's not so big that if I get the wrong town, you're going to get the wrong info. Um, so let's, let's give that a try. It's going to take a sec for Starry Night to make its way all the way to Witten, Germany. So give it a sec. We have to go uh, all the way across the ocean and over to Europe. All right. So give it a sec. And then I see you, Chicago area. New Lenox, if you missed it, uh, right near the beginning of the video, right near the beginning of this program, I mentioned where to look for Chicago. Um, same information. Anything in the Chicago area, New Lenox, I saw Kankakee, um, I think Western Suburbs, all that. All that is, is if I show you Chicago information, you're good. Okay. Um, okay. So here's the comet. And we're going to go. So Witten, Germany, you are lucky because the comet is out for you basically all night. So I'm going to dial this backwards, or sorry, I'm going to go forward. So this is July 17th. I'm going to go July 18th. So this will be tomorrow morning. So I'm going to dial this back. Basically, look at that. Germany is at a higher latitude than, uh, than mo the good chunk of the United States. And so we're going to go back to basically sunset and check this out, everybody. So here's the comet. So Big Dipper, all right. So there we go. Uh, I suspect they may call it the plow over in Europe or certain parts of, of Germany or the wagon. I think they may call it the wagon in Germany. You'll have to, you'll have to call me on that if I got that wrong. So tonight it was visible and look at this. I'm, I'm going, I'm stepping forward by an hour and they get to see it all night long. How cool is that? Just remember where it is in relation to the Big Dipper. All right. So the Big Dipper is essentially going to be pointing to it. So those lucky ducks over there in Germany, they get to see the comet all night. It's going to set for us here in Chicago. So uh, far enough north, it won't set. OK, so here we go. All right. We've got Germany. And all right, I'm going to do. Let's see. So for the Kankakee person. So they probably missed it. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you Kankakee. So here we go. All right, give me a sec. It's gonna make its way there. All right, so Kankakee will. I know the Kankakee person may not have sound to be able to hear, but they will be able to see it up on the screen. No problem. While we're doing that, I'm going to take a quick drink of water. All right. This was this morning. So we're going to go to, or sorry, this evening. We're going to go to 9.45 tonight. So here it is, Kankakee. And whoops. And the comet, eight, uh, 14 degrees above the horizon at 9.45 tonight. That'll be a good time to go out um, if it happens to be clear in Kankakee. Uh, so about 9.45 tonight, Sarah or, um, or Colleen, if you want to give Kankakee their uh, quick note, 9.45 tonight um, to the northwest, below the Big Dipper, 14 degrees up. And we're good. All right. Okay, how are we doing, guys? I hope you're having fun. And I'm going to, oh, we've got a couple of questions. Um, so while we're going to Washington Island in Door County, one of my favorite places, let's see if it's, uh, I need to, you know what, I'm going to do Green Bay because I think that may be the closest large town that's actually in this database. So while we're going there, there's a question that came up. Why are comets fuzzy? What are they made of? So comets are made of, of basically, well, we like to call them snowy dirt balls or dirty snowballs. Uh, they are large chunks of ice and dirt and rock out there in space. Um, Comet Neowise uh, is about four miles across, which is, pretty good for a comet size. Um, it, the, where the fuzziness comes from is this, this chunk of 
dirt and rock and ice and stuff. When it gets close to the sun, uh, the sun heats it up. The uh, material starts streaming off the comet away from the sun. And so that's what forms the comet's tail. So this material that comes off the comet forms a cloud around the, the head of the comet. Or that is the head of the comet. The, the iceberg, we call it the nucleus. So the, the icy stuff comes off the comet, uh, forms a cloud around that nucleus called the head, and then that stuff streams away from the comet, and we call that the tail. And so that is why comets are fuzzy. So uh, they essentially have material that's coming off of them. And then when that comet goes away from the sun, there's less and less heat, less and less activity, and then they stop being fuzzy, and they're just chunks of dirty snowballs again. So um, so uh, how high will it be? And do you have advice on photographing it? OK. So and I know who left that message. So hello to other family, Colleen and Karen, up in uh, camping up in Washington Island. So we've got the comet at uh, 9.45 PM tonight. Um, is 17 degrees up, but let's go into next week. So let's go to the 20th and it will be about 22 degrees up. The 23rd, it will be uh, 26 degrees up. Now photographing it, there's a couple things you can do and this is good for anybody. So if you have a cell phone, if you have an I'm going to say iPhone 11 because that's the one that I know of that you can do this with. The Android, the newer Androids may have this capability, and I just don't have an Android, so I don't know. This is an iPhone 8, but an iPhone 11, I know, has the capability that if you point just your regular camera app at the sky and you tap where the where the comet is supposed to be in the sky, you, you point at it, you tap it, the camera will automatically sense the brightness level, the light level, and all of that, and it will adjust the um, uh, the the how long your shutter stays open. All right, and so uh, the iPhone 11 can do that. If you have an older iPhone, anything 10 and earlier, uh, you're going to need a specialized app. I know of at least two for the iPhone and one for Android. There's one for iPhone called Nightcap. There's another one called Camera Plus. So the word camera and the little plus. And then for Android, it's Camera FV-5. And with those apps, um, let me uh, dial this up on my, because I happen to have Camera Plus. So I'm going to stop sharing for just a second because I can put this in front of my camera. All right. So this is Camera Plus. You can see me, right? So my camera's up here. Here's the screen. I can adjust the camera. Uh, I can take it off of auto, and I can adjust the amount of time that the shutter stays open. And look at that. It is changing the brightness because it's leaving the shutter open for longer. Now it's open for a third of a second. And this ISO number right here, ISO just means the brightness of the image. An ISO of 200 is twice as bright as an ISO of 100. So if I go up or down in ISO, I can then get an image that looks a little more reasonable. But I've left the shutter open. I've, I'm gathering more light. OK, then I can take a picture. Now, that was for a third of a second. You're going to want to dial your ISO, your brightness, and your shutter speed um, probably to something more like two seconds, maybe three. In order to do that, you can't do handheld. You need a tripod. All right. And I'm going to show you the tripod that I have. All right. Just a little tripod. That's all it is. Um, if you don't have one of these, get a stack of books. If you don't have a stack of books, Get some pots and pans. Just get something to hold your camera steady so that it's not shaking in your hand. OK, and you should be able to then get a halfway decent picture of the comet. I did get a picture of the comet with my iPhone um, earlier this week. It can be done. You just have to mess with the ISO. You have to mess with the uh, with the shutter speed. 
if you can mess with what's called the aperture or the f-stop, you want that to be as low of a number as possible. Um, I know that some of the other apps can do that. So there you go. If you have a DSLR camera, you can put it on manual or bulb and you can adjust the settings that way. I know Colleen is writing a blog post about how to take a picture of the comet. If you did not get everything I just said, she's putting all these tips into the blog post because I just wrote these up a couple days ago. And so you look for that blog post and uh, hopefully she'll put when that blog post will be open soon. Um, and so you can check that out. So there you go. There's some tips and tricks for taking a picture of the comet. Now let's get back to the night sky here. All right, so we've got, um, let's see, how are we doing here, folks? We are going to go to, let's see, how about uh, Scarborough, Toronto? How about that? Thanks for joining us, Toronto, Ontario. All right, let's do, nope, because the only Scarborough that shows up is United Kingdom. So let's go to Toronto. I know that's in there. All right, and we're heading to Tor Toronto. Okay, so there we go. We've got this dialed up. This is July 23rd, so we're going to go back to July 17th, which is tonight. And this is set for, let's see, this is set for 1045, about 945. And it is 19 degrees up, 1045. It is 12 degrees up. So um, not too bad. Uh, if you can get out to where you've got some, some clear horizon views, that'd be great. And then Toronto, if you see over the next few days, you've got a chance to be able to see the comet. I'm going back in time. Oh, by the way, forgot to mention to everyone, the moon is going to be up. Uh, on the 23rd as well. We've got a crescent moon that night. So that'll make a nice view in the sky. Okay. How are we doing, everybody? I hope you're having fun. I'm having fun. All right. So we've got, how about Fort Worth, Texas? All right. Oops. Fort Worth. There we go. Let's head there. Now, the comet, uh, the farther south you are, the lower the comet's going to be in the sky. The farther north you are, the higher the comet is going to be in the sky. All right. So here we go. We're heading to Fort Worth. And I'm going to dial this back to the 17th. And this is set for 9.45 tonight. Whoops, sorry. This is 8.45. So it adjusted for time zone. Here we go. 9.45 Let's do nine. Let's let's do nine thirty because that's a little closer in time. There we have. So to the northwest, basically almost due northwest, almost almost directly halfway between north and west. It is fourteen degrees up. All right, so lower than Chicago. Um, so not too bad. You need need that clear view to the northwest. All right. Oops, you guys can't see my screen. Uh oh. That might be because I didn't share it. Oh my goodness. See, technical flubs. Oh, that's why I have Colleen and Sarah on to tell me when I do really dumb things like that. So there we go. So here, Fort Worth, we got it. Toronto, I'll go back to you because I probably wasn't sharing at that point. So, um, so here we go. Fort Worth, 14 degrees up. All right. So that is 9.30 tonight, so in about 15 minutes, okay? So Toronto, hang on. See, what I've got is a computer doing Zoom. I've got a second screen where I've got uh, Starry Night. I've got the comments over here. I've got messages coming in on my phone. It's crazy. This is a lot of fun, but it's crazy. So there we go. All right, Toronto, this is this is for you again. So 
This is 9.30, oops, 10.30 tonight, um, 14 degrees up. There you go. All right. So let's see. Where else do we have? West Hartford, Connecticut, and somewhere in Ohio. So, hey, Ohio, I know you said Ohio. Give us a sense. Are we talking like Cincinnati? Are we talking Columbus? Are we talking Cleveland? Uh, which part of Ohio are we talking? So, Ohio, put your nearest big city um, in, the, uh, in the chat, and we'll get you. And uh, Flagstaff, I see you. And outside of Denver, I see you. So, don't worry. We'll get to you. So let's do Connecticut because you guys are in the Eastern time zone. So all right. So we're gonna go to okay, if what's in the database is Hartford. So we'll go that. So I hope you're getting a sense the more of these you see. It's really where you are. It's not really changing drastically the, the left right position of the comet. It might be a little higher. It might be a little lower. We're all pretty much going to see the comet the same place in relation to the Big Dipper. It's just is the Big Dipper a little higher or is it lower? All right. So we've got the comet here. Hartford at 1030 tonight. Uh, it is 10 degrees up. All right, so a little bit low, not too bad. Um, so where it is right this right this very second is at uh, 11 degrees up. So stick your fist out at arm's length, bottom, top. There you go. All right, so that is the top of your fist in relation to the sky. So kind of low, but Hartford over the next few days, you're going to see that thing getting higher. All right. Okay. Let me go back to the 17th. And I see that my compatriots are answer answering some great questions in the chat. So keep an eye out for that. All right. Atlanta, Georgia. I have heard Atlanta is a fantastic food town. So let's, let's go there by way of the planetarium. Again. We're coming to you live tonight um, from the Adler Planetarium, not exactly from the Adler. We've been closed since March, um, but we are with you online. We are providing this program tonight to give you a sense of where to look in the sky to find Comet Neowise. We can't be out there with our telescopes to show you the comet in person, um, but we want to give you the tools, the tips to be able to go find it yourself. Uh, if you have a pair of binoculars, if you have a cell phone to possibly take a picture of this thing, um, then we, we hope we want to give you as much information as we can to be able to go find it. All right. Also, uh, because the other planetarium has been closed, um, we would surely appreciate if you decide to make a donation to the other. No amount is too small. Uh, Colleen has put a link uh, in the description of this program, and she will put a link in the chat for this program as well. If you decide to, we surely appreciate it. It would allow us to bring more programs like this to you in the future. We hope we get more bright comets in the future. Um, so here we go. So we've got Atlanta and let's do Atlanta. It is right now in Atlanta, this very second in Atlanta, it is 10 degrees up. All right. So basically almost due Northwest. So go North West halfway in between. All right. And 10 degrees up. And that's where the comet is. And then over the next few days, Atlanta, here you go. You can see it's going to pass right through the feet of the Big Dipper. All right. And I keep stopping on the 23rd. The 23rd is the date that the comet reaches its closest point to Earth, uh, a mere 64 million miles away. Around the corner, as far as the solar system goes, eh, Actually, no, really not that far away, or it, it is pretty far. Um, it's it's not anything we need to worry about. It's not going to hit us. It's not going to affect us. It will just, hopefully, it will stay about as bright as it is now. Um, it's getting farther from the sun, which means it's getting farther from the heat. Um, but because it's going to be a little bit closer, we hope that will allow it to stay about as bright as it is now. After the 23rd, 
we just don't know how bright it's going to stay. It may not even stay as bright as it is now, between now and then. So we truly don't know. Comets are some of the hardest things for us to predict the brightness. And Jose, I know, is, is frantically trying to search for the comet with his uh, telescope, if it's even clear at that point. But he sent me the greatest quote. I'm going to read it to you. And I'm going to remember this. I think I may get this like written up on a poster or something. And um, here's a quote that... Uh, the, from Jose, uh, he, again, one of our telescope volunteers. He's the one trying to see if he can find it with his telescope. If he can, then I'll show you his, uh, his image in just a bit. Um, he said, I always say that astronomy teaches you to be humble. No matter what equipment you buy, no matter how ready you are, if the event you are not look, that you are looking for is not ready in time, or you are not in the right place, and with the right weather, you will not see anything. In this hobby, nothing is about you. Just remember that nothing is about us. This is the universe deciding whether or not we're actually going to see this thing. All right. So there we go. That's some uh, some tips to remember. OK. Uh, so Columbus. All right. I know that there are some Ohio State fans out there. I know I know that you're out there. All right. Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. Okay. All right. So Columbus, your latitude is a little bit south of Chicago, so it won't be quite as high um, as it is for us. But right now, the comet is 14 degrees up. So to the northwest, North, west, halfway between, one fist on the horizon, top of the fist is 10 degrees, this is 20 degrees, all right, and about halfway up your second fist there, all right, so that is about 14 degrees up, so good luck Columbus, let us know if you see it. Okay, we've got, we've got a very patient Colorado person, so let me go to Colorado, it probably is not dark there, so let's try Denver. All right, so don't be surprised if Starry Night shows up as still sunlit. And right after we do Denver, Chicago, we're coming back for you. All right, okay, so you can see it is not dark yet in Denver. Um, so they're in the mountain time zone, sun has not set quite yet. It's probably getting kind of close right there. Um, but let's go about an hour forward in time for you. Okay. So it might take a little longer than an hour. But for you, Denver, it'll be 17 degrees up. Okay, so at about uh, 920, but 930. It'd be 15 to 17 degrees up. So there you go. Okay. Let's go back to Chicago. I know we've got some, some folks who have signed on since we started the program. And just to introduce myself, my name is Michelle. I'm from the Adler Planetarium. And I've got my colleagues, Colleen and Sarah, behind the scenes feeding me where you're from and feeding me your questions. I know that Sarah is answering questions too. I think Colleen might be also. Um, so we together are bringing you this program live because we want to give you the tools to be able to go find Comet Neowise yourself. We can't be with you in person. So we're bringing you this um, program completely unscripted. We did not plan on where we were going to show uh, for Starry Night to be able to show um, where the comet is. So this is driven totally by where our audience is this evening. Okay, so here we go, Chicago. It is, we're gonna go back to where it is right now. So here we go. It is to the Northwest about 17 degrees up. Okay, so bottom of your fist on the horizon. Second fist, a little bit lower than the top of your second fist. Okay, so this is anyone in the Chicago area. Milwaukee, um, Kenosha, uh, Rockford, western suburbs, northern suburbs, northwest, southern suburbs. It's all good. New Lenox, this is good for you too. Um, so it's all good. And the uh, the comet is is 
not going to change its position all that much uh, for where you are. So um, here we go. All right, we've got, let's see if we've got some more spots here. California, I, I see you guys, so hang on. We answered. Let's see, we answered Fort Worth. So let's go to Flagstaff, Arizona. How about that? All right. Now, for those who tuned in, you might have missed the pictures. Um, the comet is, it's good. It's not great. It's, it's not completely visible uh, to the naked eye, right? So you will definitely benefit from having a pair of binoculars to be able to see it, all right? Um, and the comet is, um, there we go. The comet is, the, the head of the comet is gonna be the brighter part. The tail will be a little bit uh, harder to see. If you're under a dark sky, you may have a better chance of, of seeing some of it, um, but the, uh, there we go. The comet is um, the comet is mostly going to be mostly the head of the comet that you're actually going to spot. Give me just a sec. I know that I've got some notes coming in on my phone. Give me just a sec. This tells you this is why this is totally live. I need to check and make sure. Let's see. All right. So, all right. We're doing good. All right. There we go. So Flagstaff, so for you, uh, this is set for 825. Let's go to 9 o'clock tonight for you. All right, so we've got it July 17th, 9 o'clock, and the height above the horizon is 12 degrees. You're farther south than Chicago, so it's not going to be as high up. Again, in relation to the Big Dipper, same spot, but that whole thing will be lower in the sky, okay? So the farther north you go, the higher the Big Dipper is in the sky and the higher the North Star is until you get to the North Pole when the North Pole is directly above your head, okay? And um, then the farther south you go, the lower the Big Dipper and all of that is. By the way, fun fact, if this is the only thing you remember out of tonight, I'll be happy. Um, Polaris, the North Star, the height of Polaris above the horizon is your latitude. So if you don't know what your latitude is, just do the, the fist height above the horizon. So you've got your fist is 10 degrees, your thumb is two degrees, your pinky is one degree, right? So you can figure out how high or what your latitude is by measuring the height of the North Star above your horizon. There we go. Okay, so let's see. So uh, I'm gonna give a note to, or give a, a, a request to Sarah or Colleen. I see we've got Dallas. Do you want me to do that one again? And so highlight that one if you want me to do that one again, because I will if you need me to. Um, so we just did Flagstaff. And so we've got San Luis Obispo. I was there for a conference once. That is a cute town. That is a neat campus there for the for the university. All right. So San, let's see if San Luis Obispo is in, yep, it sure is in the database. Here we go. Um, by the way, there's someone in Texas who really wants to know where to look. We need to know where in Texas you are. It does make a little bit of a difference. Are you Houston? Are you Dallas? Are you San Antonio, Austin? Uh, are you in the, the West Midlands? Are you the Panhandle? Where in Texas are you? Kind of narrow that down a little bit for us. You don't need to give us your exact street. You don't need to give us the exact town. Just give us the, the closest big location, El Paso, where, give us the closest big city um, to where you are. All right, so, ah, Texas Gulf Coast. So, um, uh, so Texas Gulf Coast, am I cool if I put in Houston for you? Hopefully. Um, so San Luis Obispo, um, for you, so your sunset time, let's go to 9.30 p.m. for you, and the comet will be about 13 degrees above the horizon, all right? So here we go. And I see that, oh, Jose 
has the comet. I need to stop screen sharing. And I need Jose, if I hope he can hear me, to if he can screen share. And I need to type him a chat message. So give me a sec. This is going to be, whoops, this is going to be a little bit awkward. <laughs> so give me a sec. And I'm letting him know, cool, please share your screen and unmute your microphone. All right, we're going to see if Jose can do that. I just typed him a note in the chat to be able to do that. He's got the comment. I hope this works. <laughs> so we're going to try. We did not practice this because we couldn't. All right, he has started screen sharing. There it is. Oh, my gosh. Holy cow. Jose, you there? Yes, I am here. Awesome. And I know you are in Chicago. You're in yes, kind of the West Loop area. My goodness. So that is a live view? This is a live view with my uh, 80 millimeter short tube and a zoo camera. This is right now the comet as it looks. You can see the coma right here and you can see the tail extending further, uh, I guess, uh, towards the uh, one, in, one and a half. Uh, if this was a clock, of course, it would, it would go in an angle over there. Uh, it, it's moving because my mount is not motorized, so I have to actually <laughs> compensate for the movement of the Earth, but it is a live view, and I can make it a little bit brighter, I believe, but then I probably lose detail, so I'm going to leave it around here. You tell me how it looks. I think it, it, I think it looks all right. It looks fantastic. It, I'm going to check and see how it looks on the, uh, on the Zoom feed. Oh, I, my goodness. That's awesome. <laughs> That's really cool. Yep. <laughs> wow. It looks, and you can is, see the it, tail. Is uh, your, uh, is your camera a color camera? It is a color camera, yes, but um, at this point, it's not giving me a lot of color here. Maybe I can increase contrast. Give me a second. Yeah, I wasn't sure uh, if the color I'm seeing is just just the regular what's coming through in the camera, or if it was actually kind of the greenish tint that um, uh, that Joe Guzman had noted in in uh, in his recent images. It might be. I'm not. I'm not really um, doing much color control here but I, I'm actually going to leave it like that because that's cool right yep that looks great yep yeah that's one thing that I never ever want to do once I get something in view I, I usually don't want to mess with it because right. I'm afraid I'm going to lose the whole thing <laughs> right so this is the comet guys and uh it is very faint I have to say uh I cannot see it with my naked eye uh, but I can see it with binoculars for sure. It is like, uh, like uh, Mr. Benson said, I believe it's close to the two stars that are at the foot of the uh, major bear, the big bear. Yep. So, uh, but yeah, this is completely live. Oh, Jose, that is beautiful. Oh, my goodness. So... I'm noticing there's some folks putting some more locations up on the screen. We'll get back to you guys in just a little bit. Um, Jose, uh, how's the how's the sky in your area? Is it is it clear? Little wispy clouds? What's the what's the weather conditions like right there? I see clouds at the horizon, but they're not too big. Otherwise, in the area of the comet, it's clear. That's great. The sky is bright because it's Chicago, of course, and I <laughs> and I live a few blocks from the United Center, and the lights are just crazy. But um, but I could get it. Not that. That's awesome. Um, hope you guys are enjoying this in uh, in the chat. I'm going to check the, the chat comments here. So, oh, somebody said something red just went by. Was that a bug? Probably a bug, yes. I don't <laughs> think it was flying straight to be an airplane. I did see it. Um, or a satellite, but, it, but I did see it, yes. Probably a bug. Or Probably maybe a, a bird. Yeah. Or maybe a bird. That's right. Yes. Yeah. They just, they all look like big smudges in, uh, in our, in our telescope views. So, right. This is um, not very high, maybe about 20 degrees above the horizon. So yep. it's, it, yeah, birds could be flying that low. Yep. Absolutely. So 
Um, I'm checking the, the questions here. Oh, Jose, Helen Riley says hello. Hello, Helen. <laughs> questions. And so there we go. We've got, oh, we had some folks say thanks. Oh, we're going to go. Oh, it's, I see Angelica. So you said Houston, no problem. We'll get to you in just a little bit. Um, so I almost don't want to go away from seeing the comment. This is really cool. Jose, can you stay on for just a little bit? Of course I can. Awesome. Okay. If you could stop screen sharing for just a few minutes, I'm going to show a couple more uh, city locations for people to look through, to look at, and um, then we'll come back to you and we'll take a look at the comment again. Cause why not? Cause we, cause we can, right? Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So let's go back. I'm going to share my screen so I don't make that mistake again. <laughs> There we go. All right. And we had some very patient Houston area, Gulf Coast area folks. So let's go to Houston. This will cover basically Gulf Coast, uh, Texas, anywhere, anywhere in the southern uh, part of Texas. Um, Houston, Texas. There we go. How was that, guys? I, I didn't want to promise that we that uh, Jose would be able to show you the comment because earlier today, just a few hours ago, we're going, I don't know if we're going to see anything because those wispy clouds were in the way. So uh, the sky absolutely cooperated for once. We wish we could show you this live at the Adler, but um, this is, I think, just really cool that you're joining us from all over the world. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, again, this is live, unscripted. This is totally driven by you. And um, so this is uh, some tips to help you find the comet. So we've got uh, the comet here in Houston, the Gulf Coast area right now. It is about 10 degrees above the horizon. So stick your fist out at arm's length, put, your, put the bottom of your fist at the horizon. The comet will be 10 degrees up, and so which is the top of your fist. And over the next few days, it's gonna get a little higher. When we get to the 23rd, it will be about 23 degrees up. So one fist, two, and a little higher than, than uh, the top of your second fist, okay? So there we go. And so blessing Texas, hmm. I'm not sure. Let's see. Let's do the latitude and longitude for you in Blessing, Texas, because I know that won't be in the database. So let me put in the latitude and longitude for you. So we've got uh, 29 degrees north and we've got, uh, let's see, 96 degrees west. Okay. All right. We're going to travel from Houston to, looks like we're going near Bay City. Oh, you're right. Yeah, that is, oh, that's right. That's 23rd. So let's go to tonight. All right. So that is 10 degrees up. So that, that little bit of difference north-south didn't make a huge amount of difference in terms of where the comet will be. So same thing for, for Houston. Um, so 10 degrees up, it's going to get higher over the next few days to the 23rd, and then it will be about 23 degrees up. So there you go. The numbers are pretty similar. Just remember, it's going to slide right through the feet of the big bear. All right. So we had Toronto. Um, we'll get back to Toronto in just a sec. So hold on. And we had Montgomery, Alabama. So we'll go to Montgomery and then we'll go to Toronto. Uh, Montgomery. Whoops. Here we go. This is interesting because this is requiring me to type and talk at the same time, which I know a lot of us have trouble doing. So I'm sure all of us have encountered Zoom meetings over the last few months that we've had to do a lot of this, right? So here we go. Okay. So Montgomery, this is the 23rd. So let's go back to the 17th. Okay, Montgomery, it's pretty low, seven degrees up right now. So kind of have a pretty tough time seeing it tonight, but between now and the 23rd, it's going to get higher. So we'll go to the 23rd. It will get as high as about uh, 19 degrees. So 20 degrees. So it might be a little tough, but over the next few days, it's going to get better for you. Okay. So 
Oh, yes. So I have a special request. Forgive me, Toronto. I need to do this one. So uh, we have a special request for London, England. And this is a special request for Mr. Ian Scott. And Ian knows who he is. So let's go to London. I know he's sleeping right now. Um, but I have a feeling he will be made aware of this and he would have wanted to tune in but it was pretty late London time so I know friends of his family of his is uh, keeping an eye out for him and wanting to make sure he sees the comet too so there we go so let's go across the pond to England so it's going to take a, a couple seconds in order to do that All right. Oh, see, he gets the same lucky treatment. He's going to be able to see this thing pretty much all night. So let's go back. So tonight, whoops, sorry. We're going to go to tomorrow night. Okay, so we're going to go to, let's say, 10 o'clock. Let's try 1030 London time. So this is tomorrow night, 1030 London time. Here's the comet right amongst the feet of the big bear, 20 degrees up. And over the next few days, it's going to get higher. So between now and the 23rd, it will be 25 degrees up. So they're going to have a pretty good view. Um, in England. And one thing that they have been seeing over in Europe that we don't necessarily see in the States because our, our latitude isn't quite high enough. They've been seeing what are called noctilucent clouds. And those are uh, clouds that are seeded by meteor smoke. So meteors burn up within the, the Earth's atmosphere, high up in the Earth's atmosphere, and the, the meteor trails seed clouds. And these are called noctilucent clouds because they're so high up in the atmosphere that they're still being illuminated, but it's dark down on the ground. So there have been pictures taken of Europe, um, or pictures taken in Europe, especially Northern Europe, of the comet amongst noctilucent clouds, which is apparently really awesome. I've never seen them myself. So anyway, um, I'm going to give a special hello to Ian um, and uh, hope he gets to see the comet. So I expect a full report. All right. So, okay. Where are we going now? Let's see. We did Flagstaff. We did... Oh, we did, uh, we did Columbus, and I know Dayton is a little bit west of there, so you might have missed Columbus. So, um, whoops. So Columbus. We're going to head there, and then we'll do a couple more, and then we'll go back to the, the comet view uh, from Jose. So those who just missed it, if you're just joining us, my name is Michelle. I'm from the Adler Planetarium. This is live. This is not scripted. This is a program where we are showing you where you will go to be able to try to find Comet Neowise. It very much helps if you have a pair of binoculars. Uh, the comet is relatively bright, but it's not showstopper bright. All right. So I'm using a program called Starry Night. And this program is allowing me to dial up your location um and to dial up where you will need to look to be able to see the comet this is a desktop planetarium program uh, this is just m the one that i like to use there are many others uh, you may have your own personal preference so there we go we've got uh, 12 degrees above the horizon right now for uh, Dayton, Columbus, that part of Ohio, that part of central western Ohio. And then over the next few days, it's going to be a little higher and a little farther to the west. All right, we are still going. Oh my goodness, it has been over an hour. Um, we're going to do a few more. But first, let's check out the comet live. So Jose, are you ready to go? You still see it? I'm going to give him a chance to share. Oops, I need to stop, stop sharing my screen. All right, I'm going to type a message to him. I'm ready. Let me yep, there uh, we go. go back to this. All right, go for it. Share my screen. Okay, 
and you see it. There it is. Yes, absolutely. It's beautiful. Right. And so, if you if you saw it um, like a few minutes ago, the distance in relation to this star was different. Was a little bit uh, farther from this little star in here. Yep. And that's because the comet is actually moving in the sky, but the movement that we see is is really not in relation to the tail that it has. And people believe that the comets are zooming through the sky and in reality they they move but very slowly. So we can take pictures of them, we can capture them like this in, in a camera without a problem. Uh, something is flying by, you can see maybe. Yeah, I see that. Yep. <laughs> and uh, and uh, and yes, so you can you can very clearly now that the sky is getting darker, you can see very clearly the uh, the tail. The comets have uh, three parts: the nucleus, which we cannot see right here in the middle, where the bright part is. I don't know if you can see my mouse pointer or not. Uh, the coma, which is the bright area that you can see right in front, and then the tail, obviously extending beyond the comet. The tail always points in opposite direction to the sun. So you can tell the sun is now to the lower left of my screen exactly because the sun set in that direction. That's right. That's right. And it's really cool that that even though, by the way, the movement that you're actually seeing is Jose moving his telescope. Um, so the telescope has to doesn't track. So he physically has to to uh, move it to be able to keep it pointed at the comet. So the because the Earth keeps turning. So he has to. Um, uh, allow for that. Hey, Jose, we had a, a couple questions from folks. How long did it take to set all that up for your telescope? And, and how did you do all this? So what's the, what's the equipment that you've got there? Setting the telescope um, takes me maybe 10 or 20 minutes. It's not too long. Uh, what took me a long time was to actually get the, uh, the comet because the sky was very bright and I was trying while you were explaining everything to, to, to everybody. Uh, but once um, I was able to see it with my eyepiece, I changed the eyepiece with my camera and we were good to go. In regards to the equipment, I'll, I'll show you. Um, I may have a picture. Oh, I don't know if I can do that. Oh, that's Maybe okay. Not. Maybe not. <laughs> So, um, um, so basically, you you found it with the eyepiece and the telescope first, and then once yes, you the did finder. that, you, you removed the eyepiece, and and put the camera where the eyepiece was. Is that right? That is correct. Yes, I, I found it first with binoculars, scanning the sky, the area where the comet was supposed to be, and once I found it, I went to my telescope, uh, refined the position, uh, looked at it uh, in the eyepiece, made sure that it was what I was wanted to see and uh, and then change the camera. It's a planetary camera, but, it, but we are using it now for comets. Still works. And yeah, this they're... is a live view. We're taking a picture every quarter of a second. So four oh, frames neat. per second is what we are seeing right now. And we, it's still, you, you can see the, the, the tail pretty good. I believe. Yeah, you can. Yeah, it extends out pretty far. I'm seeing it with my cursor. Uh, I'm going to see if my cursor is showing up on your screen probably not no that's okay but i'm looking at the i'm looking at the youtube broadcast and actually it shows up even better on the youtube broadcast than it does on the second screen that i'm using so oh, um, that is really neat and so there was a question that someone said um uh, I, I think I saw a reddish ball. Did I see the comet? So when you're when you're looking at it through the telescope and you're looking at it in binoculars, uh, do you think that sounds like that that person got the comet or maybe they might have been seeing something else? Uh, if it was red, it was probably something else. Um, it, it, it doesn't move too fast. Uh, if it was red, I would say that that was not the comet. Make sure that what you're seeing in binoculars, it would look exactly like this green, but very small, much smaller. Yep. So if you're seeing anything reddish, it's it's not the comet. Um, I'm guessing maybe you might have gotten an out of focus uh, star, possibly. It might be the star Arcturus. Um, which the Big Dipper's handle uh, points to Arcturus. Um, so you follow the curve. If, if that might have been the thing that you might have been pointed at, and if it was a ball, 
uh, if you're looking through binoculars, you might have to refocus those binoculars. So stars should always look like points, no matter what. So you see the picture that Jose has here, all those points are stars. And no matter how much magnification he adds, they're always going to look like points. Um, the uh, comet, though, is going to show up as fuzzy. And so that's the best word that we can describe. So the, the, the view that you've got here is perfectly fuzzy. <laughs> Um, I'm going to check to see if there are. Uh... Somebody wrote that I have my telescope on the ground, uh, I, I actually in a, in a balcony, in a condo. Uh, yes, <laughs> yes, he's, he's in a condo the in the western loop area of Chicago under all those lights. All right. Yep. Absolutely. Okay. So Jose, I need to I need to do uh, one more quick city. I need to do Toronto. So um, if you could stop sharing and we'll come back to you in just a sec. Sure. And we've had a very patient Toronto. So here we go. All right, Toronto, this is for you. We're heading there. We're going to go visit you. We can't vis visit you in person, but we will visit you via the planetarium. Here we go. So it is... There we go. All right, so this is live where the comet should be. And it is about 13 degrees up, Toronto. So um, so not too bad. And over the next few days, it's gonna get a little higher. So there you go. All right, oh, and we've got Wichita, Kansas out in the country. Oh, I'm so jealous. So, all right, Wichita. And here we go. And someone mentioned uh, talking about landing a spacecraft on a comet because that's fun. You're right. Landing a spacecraft on a comet is fun. It's hard. Um, if you want to look up um, uh, a mission that landed a spacecraft on a comet, that was the Rosetta mission that landed on the comet churyumov gerasimenko or comet 46P uh, or 47P. Oh, shoot. Now I can't remember. It's 46P? I think it was 46P. Oh, darn it. I hope Jose will, will correct me on that. I want to make sure I got that right. As soon as I said it, I went, am I actually remembering that right? Someone will correct me. Anyway, um, so this is Wichita. If you're out in the country, again, northwest, all right, halfway between north and west, almost exactly. Uh, and this is, we're going to go to right now. So right now, it is 15 degrees up. Okay, so to the northwest, Wichita, there you go. And we'll do, we'll do Austin, and then we'll go back to the view from Jose. All right. So Austin, you're going to be lower in latitude than Wichita, so expect it to be a little bit lower in the sky. There you go. So Wichita right now, or sorry, sorry, Austin right now, it is nine degrees up, pretty low. Uh, but over the next few days, it's going to get higher. Okay. All right. So. All right, Jose, why don't you, uh, as soon as, soon as I, whoops, I just realized I was not sharing my screen. Oh my goodness, I did it again. Oh, I did it again. Darn it. Here you go, Austin. Toronto, did I do that? Did I actually show Toronto? Colleen and Sarah, did I actually show Toronto or did I, whoops, or did I mess that up? So tell me if I, if I, uh, if I was talking while, not sharing my screen for Toronto because I want to make sure that I hit that one. I think we did. So here we go. We've got Austin is nine degrees up and then it'll get higher. And then we're going to go to Wichita because I think I missed that one. And let me check. All right. So again, this is live, unscripted. 
So occasionally I'm going to mess up. So forgive me for that. So Wichita, we're going to go back to you just to make sure that I actually shared my screen. And Toronto, we'll show you again. All right, here we go. So here you go, Wichita, uh, yeah, Wichita tonight, right now, it is 15 degrees up, all right? So over the next few days, there you go. All right, and then Toronto, again, we're all gonna know Toronto really well by the end of this program, right? If you've stuck with us throughout all this, then you get a special gold star for doing that. Okay, and then we'll go back to Jose. Okay, Toronto, here you go. So this is right now and in Toronto, 12 degrees up. So it's a little lower um, than earlier, but over the next few hours, what's kind of interesting is it's basically gonna skim the Northern horizon. It's not gonna set for you, Toronto. So it'll, it'll, get, it'll get low, but it won't totally set. So you will be able to see it all night. So special bonus for Toronto. There you go. I'll go forward in time again. So there you go. And over the next few days, so this is tomorrow morning. You can see it's just going to barely skim the horizon. Um, so it's going to be visible almost the entire night uh, over the next week or so. So Toronto, you get some extra views of the comet that not everybody here in the States is going to get. So, all right, Jose, you still got it? I'll give you a chance to unmute. There you go. I still have it, yes. Awesome. It. We'll go back to you. And we're seeing a lot of Chicago requests pop up. So, so while Jose is actually showing a live view of the comet, um, I will talk those Chicago viewers through where to look. Actually, Jose, um, since you're actually looking at it, do you want to tell all those Chicago viewers uh, where they might want to where they might want to point their eyeballs right now? Sure, it is in the uh, northwest sky, maybe about 20 degrees high. Uh, if you let's see, if you extend your right arm to the north and your left arm to the west, it will be exactly in front of your eyes, but getting lower in the sky. Uh, you, somebody said, could see the Big Dipper. It is lower than the Big Dipper. Um, I don't know, in, in the charts that you were showing, Michelle uh, shows a couple of stars that are the feet of the bear. It is very close to those. If you have binoculars, it will help you a lot. If you do not have binoculars, it's going to be hard unless you are in a very dark sky. It Although is not particularly bright, but it's the brightest one we have seen in, I don't know, maybe 10 years or maybe more. Yeah, I, I think we got a report from uh, Mark Benson saying he did actually spot it naked eye tonight um, he, I, I, in the Oak Park area. Um, yeah. So he, suburbs, he was able to see Suburbs, he may be, yeah, yeah, I'm not surprised. Suburbs is, is, is a little bit better than the city. And, and Mark is younger than me, so maybe his eyesight is better than mine. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yes, I, I believe that that is what it is. I was just going to point out, Michelle, see, oh the gosh, comet is moving it, yeah. really quickly. Oh yep. So let me zoom in here, see if we can see. The star is actually now being, it's behind the coma of the, yeah. uh, of the comet. That's cool. We so those seeing, of you... Those of you yeah. who saw his image uh, a little mm -hmm. while ago, you noted there were two stars there, um, but now the comet is in front of that sort of top right star. That's awesome. Yes. So in a few minutes, it will the star will reappear behind the comet. Yeah. So you're it's actually the, seeing the actual comet. 
So you're not seeing, I mean, with the, with the comet moving down into the right in your image, that's the movement of the Earth. But the movement of the comet in relation to that star is the movement of the comet. Exactly. That's, that's cool. exactly right. That is really cool. So if any of you have been sticking around with us for like the last half hour or so, you've noted maybe two or three times that Jose has showed the image. The comet has literally moved in the solar system that little bit as you could actually see it in relation to a couple of stars that are visible um, through his telescope right now. That's neat. Yep, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit now and make a full frame for this camera. Oh, wow, that's and, cool. Uh, you see, oh yeah. Now I put the, the YouTube live on my on my cell phone and I can see, yeah, it actually <laughs> looks better than my, my own screen. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to take a screenshot right now because this is too good to, to lose. So there we go. Awesome. That's neat. Um, you can see we're geeking out about this about as much as, as uh, two people can geek out about this sort of thing. Um, and that's because we are fans of astronomy. We really are. Um, once you get into this subject, uh, it just doesn't leave you. Um, and, and you just get hooked. And once you see one comet, you want to see more of them. Once you see a solar eclipse, you want to see another one. Um, Jose, how many comets have you seen? I, I'm old, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to age myself right now. I did see Halley's Comet in 1986. I, I saw Hale Bob. I saw Yakutaki. I saw Holmes. I, I've seen maybe, maybe 10 or 12 different comets of different brightness. Uh, this is probably the fourth or fifth better, the the best uh, comet that I have seen. Nice. Do you have a Do you have a favorite? Yakutaki, for sure. Uh, I saw it in South America, and the the, the tail was, uh, I mean, it, it occupied half of the sky. It wasn't. Great. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah, I heard I heard those reports. I saw it mostly from the Chicago area, uh, from. The, from the Adler area, from the from the West Chicago, the the suburb West Chicago. Um, so yeah, I remember that that comet just had an amazing tail. And Hale Bop, I think, I think Hale Bop and Hyakutake are like one and one A for yes. me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So also because I got to meet Yuji Hyakutake, the discoverer of comet Hyakutake, he that visited the Adler. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and um, he's no longer with us, unfortunately. But um, he 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 basically, if I if I know if I remember the story right, he quit his job specifically so he could spend more time looking for comets. That's what he wow. loved to do, and he built this stereo uh, this binocular telescope system. Yeah. So he essentially had two large telescopes side by side, so he could use them as binoculars to be able to scan the sky. So. He, he was amazing. He really was. He's pretty incredible. Yeah. 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 He was from Japan. So, um, so if anyone is taking any pictures, um, if you want to share any pictures or any observations of the comet, please uh, tag us with the hashtag look up and you can send it to at Adler planet on Twitter. As long as our Twitter account has been unlocked, I think um, at Adler planet on Instagram or at Adler Planetarium on Facebook. So you can use any of those social media handles to be able to send us a picture. I took a screenshot and so I'm gonna send it to um, Colleen and so hopefully she can post that pretty soon. All right, um, can you use the phone zoom for a much better view? Jose, what do you what do you think about zooming in? Actually, you were doing that. So let's do a little demo as to what zooming in does to an image. So if you uh, want to zoom in on your on your image a little bit. Sure. Let me put the uh, comma in the center since I'm going to zoom in. And uh, let's see 100%, 200%. So it looks like it's gotten a little grainier. It does, yes. Yep. And um, so zooming in is not necessarily going to make the view that much better. Um, you're going to be at the limit of, see, now you've got a, a bright splotch for the, for the head of the comet, and the tail isn't really as visible um, exactly. as it was. 
Yeah. Exactly. It it, it kind of dilutes the uh, the the resolution of the of the camera. B bigger a bigger image does not necessarily mean a better resolution. And you can see the noise of the camera a lot a lot easier. And you can see that the star that is right behind. Uh, or below the comet is is not very sharp, so it's not necessarily better. Right. And that little uh, what what you can see though is uh, right now you can see right at the uh, lower right side of the comet you may see the other star that is just coming be from behind there. The oh comet. yeah, I see that. Yep, it looks so like the comet has a little protrusion there off to the right. It, right, it's not really the comet as you say yes it is it is just that star because the comet is moving so fast that we can see we can perceive the movement of the comet in just uh, a few minutes yeah the comet is moving by the way well over a hundred thousand miles an hour well over a hundred thousand miles an hour so like a hundred and sixty thousand miles an hour or something like that so really really fast so all right well, we had a couple more requests for locations. Um, so Jose, if you could stop sharing your screen and I will remember to share my screen this time. So there we go. Hey. Thank you. That was beautiful. And hope you guys are enjoying seeing the comet live. That was from Jose's balcony in Chicago. All right, so we're going to go to, let's see, Temecula, California. You have been very patient. So let's see. All right, that is not in the database. So let's go to latitude and longitude for that. Latitude 33 north and longitude 117 west. All right, there we go. So you're going to be about 10 degrees farther south than Chicago. So the comet is going to be uh, farther, well, lower in the sky for you. Um, so we're going to go to July 22nd. And actually, now we're going to go back to the 17th. So we're going to go to tonight. And there we go. So nine o'clock tonight for Temecula, California. Um, there it is right there. By the way, anyone asking about Chicago, um, if you want to see where it is in relation to the Big Dipper so that I don't have to go back to Chicago and then come back to uh, locations out on the West Coast in, in this planetarium desktop program, um, here it is in relation to the Big Dipper. It's just going to be a little higher in the sky for the Chicago area. So Chicago suburbs, the general Chicago vicinity. Um, so here it is, uh, here's the Big Dipper, and there it is in relation to the Big Dipper. So for California, uh, for this location, it's 12 degrees up tonight at nine o'clock. Right now in Chicago, it's maybe about 15 degrees up. So a little bit higher in the sky, okay? So a little bit easier to see than, than this location. So there you go. Okay, couple more. I we have been on for oh my goodness, and almost an hour forty, and so um, for anyone tuning in and 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 watching this say tomorrow and going wow this is a long program. You're right, this is a long program. Okay, so we've got uh, oh my goodness, Indonesia. Um, we've got Southern Mississippi. So I'll hit two of them with one, and let's do. Um, uh, let's do Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And for the person in Mississippi, I know that you're farther east, um, but that'll be a good general vicinity for both of you. So let's just go to, um, let's just go to Baton Rouge. Some excellent food down there in Baton Rouge. If you have never been, you must go eat there. I had some of the best crawfish etouffee of my life in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I know Sarah knows exactly where I'm talking about as to where I had the most excellent uh, uh, crawfish etouffee of my life. Okay, so Baton Rouge, Mississippi, that area right now, the comet is apparently just below the horizon. So it has... It has set for you. Oh, wait, no, it hasn't. Sorry, it has not. They're in the central time zone, right? There we go. 
So sorry, sorry about that. It is five degrees up. So uh, right now it is five degrees above the horizon. So if you stick your fist out at arm's length, bottom of your fist is on the horizon, it's half the height of your fist. So you have to have a clear view, basically right down the horizon, and it's not gonna be very bright at all. So I would recommend over the next couple of days, um, go out more like nine o'clock, 9.30, and you'll see it's a lot higher in the sky. So those of you in the Mississippi, Louisiana area, these numbers are for you, okay? And we actually had, uh, let's see, we had, do we have someone in Pennsylvania? Okay, we have someone in Pennsylvania, so they're looking for it right now. So I'm gonna give that person a better sense of where to look. So we've got, bit south of Scranton. So let me see if Scranton's in there. Nope. And so let me put latitude and longitude in there. And let's see, latitude 41. Oh, so you're basically at Chicago's latitude and you are further east. So that is 76 degrees west. And Sarah is the best for putting this information in my notes. This was so perfect. So for those who are just joining us, while well, our desktop planetarium program is going to uh, the vicinity of a um, bit south of Scranton, Pennsylvania, um, we have this program coming to you from the Adler Planetarium in Chicago. We cannot be with you in person, but we are with you online. And while we're doing uh, these online programs, we want to give you the tips, tricks, and tools to be able to try to find Comet Neowise. Um, so here is the comet uh, from Pennsylvania right now. So here's the Big Dipper. So kind of angled downward. So it's right near the feet of of the uh, the Great Bear. It is only about six degrees up for you right now in Pennsylvania. So there we go. We have another Myanmar. This is our second Myanmar in two nights. Welcome Myanmar. We apparently have fans in Myanmar. That is really neat. Um, so let's do Myanmar and then we'll check in with Jose one more time and then we'll let him go to bed because it's getting late. <laughs> All right. And I know that uh, I know that Myanmar is not, there isn't a city in this database. So forgive me, Myanmar, I'm gonna pick Bangladesh. Um, I know that's not quite right, um, but we'll make it work. It won't be too far off for you. So this is gonna take a little while. Starry Night is gonna make its way over to the other side of the planet. Um, so, oh, and then we've got Indonesia on the island of Java. I think we're all imagining that'd be a really great place to visit too. So, all right. So here we're going. It is gonna be daylight because what Starry Night is doing is giving me the equivalent view in the sky right now. So it is a different time zone on the other side of the planet. So it'll be daylight there. Um, so you can see the time changing up here. So in, uh, that general part of the world, it is apparently 12 hours later. So let's go to 12 hours after that. So tomorrow night, or for them tonight, um, let's go to about nine o'clock. So here you go. So there you go, Myanmar. You've got eight degrees up. And at nine o'clock, 9 p.m., and then over the course of a few days, it's going to get higher in the sky for you. So that'll look really pretty with the crescent moon on the 23rd and about 21 degrees up on the 23rd. So, all right. And Java, Indonesia. Let's see if that's in the... Uh, it is not. So let's do latitude. So Sarah, is it... It's latitude, oh, it is, it's latitude um, eight degrees south. Hmm, this'll be an interesting one. Longitude 127 east. This is gonna be interesting. We'll see if the comet will be visible from 
Java in Indonesia because the North Star will be below the horizon at that location, which means the Big Dipper will be even lower in the sky. Um, so let's see if the comet is even going to be visible from Java. This will be a good, uh, a good tool. So, okay, this is 11 p.m. We're going to have to go to an earlier time. So this is on July 23rd. All right. So it is, that's not terrible. So you're going to look in the Northwest. Again, the Big Dipper is going to be in a different orientation. You're going to want to look, let's see if it's going to be visible tomorrow night, just on the horizon. So not really visible tomorrow night. But if you keep going forward in time, it's basically going to come straight up out of the Northwest. Um, so we're looking at about 7.30 PM. Let's look at 8.30 PM it's, or 8 o'clock. It's going to be fairly low, not impossible, but pretty low. All right. Oh, and we've got someone for the Philippines. So where in the Philippines? We need, we need a, a town because the Philippines is pretty spread out. Hey, Jose, are you still there? Yes, I am, Michelle. All right, we're gonna take one more quick look at the comment and then we'll let you go because um, you yep. have been more than generous with your time while we're getting a, a town in the Philippines for, uh, for that person. So I've stopped sharing. So for those just joining us, Jose is a fantastic Adler Planetarium telescope volunteer, very skilled with his telescope and his camera. Um, and he has been showing us live pictures of the comet um, throughout the program. There it is. Oh, that is really neat. And note how far it is from that star. So for those who um, were with us earlier, wow, that is really moved. Look at that. So can you use your cursor? Do you, are you able to point out those two stars? Yes, absolutely. So, uh, so let me make it a little bit closer. There you go. And uh, you can see this star was behind the coma of the comet uh, maybe, what, 10, 15 minutes ago? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. It, is, it is moving really, really quickly yeah. in this direction, it seems. It was somewhere over here, and then it's moving in this direction. It, yeah. it went right over this star. Uh, this star is fainter. I, don't, I do not know right now what these stars are. Uh, probably magnitude six or seven or something like that. I'm going to look to see if I can this figure out. This other star is also bright. You can tell how much brighter they are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's see. Solarium oh, or maybe your, are... your sky program can tell you. Yep, those, uh, wow, it has, it's a star, it's a magnitude eight star, that brighter one, or this magnitude 7.9 star with oh, the wow. fantastic name of HD 73933. Okay, so now it's famous. <laughs> We and the other one, famous. yes, very famous. No, not very famous. So the other one is a magnitude 9.2 star uh, with the in immensely important name of SAO 42503. Right. Yeah, not okay, all the so stars have one, right? fancy names. <laughs> right. So there you go. So, so a magnitude 8 star is maybe about 5 or 10 times fainter than the faintest star that we can see with our naked eye. Yeah, so that tells you a little bit about the, the telescope that we are using. Um, it's not particularly big, it's not particularly powerful, but we still can see things that we cannot see with our eyes. And th that is exactly why we use telescopes here. That's awesome. Jose, the thank you. Oh, is, at this ahead. point, maybe, maybe a full degree that we can see right now. If mm -hmm. I did uh, some exposure, we could probably push it. I know the tail of this comet is maybe four degrees long or so. Right, right. But you can um, fit the, the entire moon on this screen that I'm showing you right now. The, the moon will fit neatly in, in this frame. That's amazing. Jose, Ooh. thank you so much for sharing your oh, time and your telescope and your amazing comet images. I know people have been really appreciating those in the, in the chat. So thank you 
Thank you, thank you. Uh, last chance, everyone, take a screenshot if you want to get a picture and uh, show folks what uh, you've been looking at for the last uh, hour or so. And uh, just want to shout out to Daniel, who just shared his comet photos from Germany. They're on Twitter. Um, so uh, that is really cool. Um, all right. Thank you, Jose. We Fantastic. really appreciate it. This was thank just you, the Michelle. Best. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a good night. We're going to stay on just a couple more cities. And then after that, you're going to have to do some research. Here, I'm going to give you a tool. Um, the tool will be that uh, you can go on to a program called Stellarium. Stellarium is a free download. It is uh, a program that is a desktop planetarium program. It's like Starry Night. It's like Sky Safari. Um, and you can use it to dial up your location, the time, the date, and you can use it to find things like Comet Neowise. Uh, you have to do a special plugin to add the comet to it, but it is something that um, uh, that you can do, and there are directions out there for how to do it. So if we don't get to your city, don't worry. There are tools out there that you can use. Okay. So, all right. And there we go. Okay. So we'll do a couple more. Oh, wow. We're getting some, some uh, foreign locations. That's so cool. So... All right. Oh, we got Manila in the Philippines. Okay. So we got our Philippines location. So here we go. We'll do a couple more and then we're going to we're going to end for tonight because this is this is a lot later than any of us thought we would knew we would ever be <laughs> be able to do this. All right, here we go. And right, we'll check the notes over here real quick. There we go. All right. And so Manila, Philippines, I have this dialed up for the 23rd. We're going to go back to the 18th. And let's go to, let's say, 7.30 p.m. Um, so it's going to be pretty low on the horizon for you. So not impossible, about six degrees up. Whoops. And I did it again. I did it again. Oh, my goodness. Hang on, guys. I'm going to share my screen. Luckily, I didn't go too far. Ugh. Screen share again. This is why Colleen, whoops, this is why Colleen and Sarah um, are out there to remind me when I mess up. Okay, so here we go. Um, this is the Philippines. All you missed was me traveling to there. Um, so we've got six degrees up for tomorrow night. 7.30 p.m. and then um, over the next few days, basically straight out of the Northwest. All right. Um, oh, someone asked, which scope are you using? Um, so for the view of the comet, that was a telescope that one of our telescope volunteers, that was his own telescope. That was, it's a, it's a refractor. Uh, the main lens is 80 millimeters across. So about, about yay big. Mm. About that big. So that was the telescope he was using. So that's his own personal telescope. Um, so yeah, that was his telescope and his camera and he shared his screen. So that was the image of the comet that we had. Um, okay, so we've got uh, Quito, Ecuador. Hello, Quito, Ecuador. Okay. So we'll see. I bet we'll be able to see it because if we could see it from a little bit south of the equator, you should be able to see it and you're pretty much right on the equator. So uh, would a four and a half inch telescope see the comet tomorrow night? If it's clear, yeah, a four and a half inch telescope, you will see the comet. Um, you'll see less of it because it's an extended object. The, small, the, the bigger the telescope, the smaller the piece of sky is that you're looking at. So just remember that you'll only see part of the, of the comet, just like Jose was showing. He had a smaller telescope, so yours is a little bit bigger. So you're going to see less of the comet itself. So you're going to miss some of the tail. So that's, that's the difference. All right. So, okay. So let's go to 
I'm going to dial back. So 7.30 p.m. Quito, Ecuador, right on the horizon. Um, but let's go forward in time. So it's going to come straight out of the Northwest in relation to the Big Dipper. I don't know if the Big Dipper has another name in Quito, Ecuador. That would be really cool to know. Um, so there you go. And one other thing I want to check is... Is it visible in the morning? And it looks like, no, it is not. So, all right. Okay. So let's see. Got one more. My goodness, we have India. Let's pick somewhere in, since they haven't replied about the region, let's pick somewhere in maybe central India, maybe. So if you want to try to pick somewhere in the middle, um, that would be great. And let's see, we did Austin, we did Flagstaff. Are we doing those again, guys? Sarah and Colleen, or or just Sarah? Am I doing one of those again? Because we've done we've done uh, Austin, Flagstaff, and Ottawa. Just making sure. So, okay, okay. So we're doing we're doing Austin. Got it. Okay. So, and so if you're wondering who I'm talking to, I've got my colleagues, Sarah and Colleen from behind the scenes. They are keeping an eye on the chat, trying to keep me from messing up, which I have done several times tonight by not sharing my screen. <laughs> so here we go. All right, so Austin, Texas. And I'm dialing it back to about 9.30 tomorrow night. And here we go. It is about 15 degrees up. And tonight, right now, it is really low. If you have a clear view down to the horizon, Austin, uh, you might see it. But I would try for tomorrow night. Um, that'd be a better chance to see it. All right. Ah, Mumbai. Got it. All right. So, okay, so let's do that. And then I think we will end on Mumbai. I think that would be a great place. Um, you may not believe this, but Mumbai is not in the database. So, Oh, so in Ecuador, they know the Big Dipper as Osa Mayor, Ursa Major, the Big Bear. That's cool. We learned something. Thank you, Sophia. That's great. So, okay. So Mumbai is latitude of 19 degrees north and longitude of uh, 73 degrees east. So for India, there we go. Heading there right now. And I'm looking over at my other screen because that's what they're feeding me the, the information. And they have learned very quickly to make the font really big and highlight it in yellow so I can see it. And then when I mess up and I don't share my screen, I've been getting texts. So I have about 30 texts on my phone tonight from Sarah and Colleen saying, screen share. <laughs> so I hope you guys have had fun tonight. We certainly have had a blast. If you happen to have taken any pictures of the comet, please feel free to share them with us uh, at Adler Planetarium on Facebook, at Adler Planet on uh, Twitter, and at Adler Planet on Instagram. And so Mumbai, uh, for you, let's go to about 8 p.m. tomorrow night or sorry, tonight, so July 18th for you. Uh, it is about 11, 10 degrees up. So it'll get a little lower. And then over the course of the next few days, you're gonna be able to see it higher in the sky. So there we go. So Sarah, you want me to do, on, uh, to, want me to do Ottawa? Am I going back there? So highlight it in another color if I'm heading back to Ottawa. <laughs> 
So while while she does that, so Mumbai, thank you, or, uh, India, thank you for joining us. Oh, I'm highlighting it. She highlighted it. So yes, we will go back to Ontario. So okay, so Ontario, Canada, you get the last one. Okay. Um, question: I read Neowise is three miles wide. I've heard four, three, four, close enough. Uh, but do we have any idea of what actual shape it is? I don't think we do. Um, not yet. Uh, I'm sure there are a bunch of telescopes taking a look at it. They, I'm wondering if they may um, uh, get some closer images, but we're not going to get really close up images because something that's three or four miles wide at 64 million miles away, we're just not going to get that much detail. More than likely, it is lumpy. It is potato shaped. It is not round. Um, so it is gonna be somewhere, uh, probably just not anything with a, with a round shape. There's not enough mass to pull it into a round shape. Um, so you're not gonna get, uh, you're not gonna get anything that looks like a planet or, or, or something. It'll look more lumpy and odd shaped, all right? So let's do 10 p.m. for you, Ontario. And Ottawa, about 20 degrees up tomorrow night. You're a little higher than Chicago area. So it's going to be higher for you. And then over the next few nights at 10, you're going to see it's going to skim below the Big Dipper. All right. So, whew, my goodness. And good night, me and Mar. Good morning to you as well. And uh, so I'm going to. Oh, in the online version. So thank you, Daniel. In the online version of Stellarium, NeoWise is already installed. Fantastic. You can use the online version. You don't even need to use the downloaded version. Very cool. So we had so many people on tonight. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sarah and Colleen, throw something in the in the in the notes if there's anything else that I didn't get to. Um, so in the Chicago area. Look northwest, look about 20 degrees up, a little bit higher over the next few nights, although it may be cloudy tomorrow night um, here in this area. Uh, it might clear up possibly Sunday night. Let me check the weather real quick. Um, so we'll see about that. Uh, but any clear night that you get, try to get out and see this thing. Get your binoculars, all right? Stars will look like points. Planets will not twinkle. Um, planets will look like points. They will not twinkle like stars do. The comet will look fuzzy. It will not be huge. It will not be extremely bright. You should have, you should try with a pair of binoculars. Okay. And, uh, hopefully you can spot it. If you notice any sort of color like orange or red or something like that, then you're not looking at the comet, right? This, it won't have a, a huge amount of color, maybe slightly green, but probably not. Um, all right. So we'll be doing, will we be doing a live showing for the 2024 solar eclipse? Oh man, we have to get past this comet first. <laughs> we don't know. We have to, we have to, we have to get past 2020. So um, uh, ask us, ask us in a few years <laughs> if we're doing a live show for, for the uh, solar eclipse, but we will be back next Thursday evening, 8.30 PM central time. And we're going to do this all over again. We're going to celebrate the fact that the comet is reaching its closest point to Earth on July 23rd. We will be back cloudy or clear. We're, we don't know if it's going to be clear in Chicagoland that night, but we'll be here no matter what. Please, 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 between now and then, every single one of you out there, I want to know, I want you to come back to us on the 23rd. I want to know if you saw it at any point in the, la in the next week. I want to know where you are, when you saw it what it looked like. I want those observation reports. So if you can make it back with us here, 8.30 p.m. Central uh, on July 23rd, which is next Thursday, please do. We would love to hear from you. If you can't be on with us that night, send us your reports and your pictures at Adler Planet on Twitter, at Adler Planet on Instagram, at Adler Planetarium on Facebook. We want to hear from you. Again, if you decide uh, you'd like to support the Adler Planetarium, we absolutely would appreciate that while we are closed. We're going to be closed for a long time, but we know that we want to be with you 
digitally at least. So that's why we're doing programs like this. And uh, we hope we can be with you in person as soon as it is safe to do so. Please everyone be well, be safe. We'll be together soon. And uh, in the meantime, we'll be together online. We'll see you next Thursday, July 23rd. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks for joining us.